Uh, first of all, thank you very much to you all for coming along today. Um, the, the health integration teams really are the sort of engine room of Bristol Health Partners, and they're the, the sort of most obvious way in which the work of the partnership, which is focused on collaboration and on sort of, you know, building teams across organisations to tackle some of the challenges that we've got in our health system, which others share. Um, the, the HITs are the most obvious mechanism by which we do that. Um, and so the, the work of the HITs is fundamentally, fundamentally important to the work of the partnership. Um, and if the HITs don't succeed, then, then neither will the partnership. So thank you for your interest. I hope that um, maybe something will come of it, either in terms of some engagement with the existing work that we've got or initiating um, some new work as a result of these discussions. Um, I'm around for the, for the whole of the event, so um, I'm very happy to answer some questions straight after this brief introduction, but I'm also around for lunch if you want to um, chat about anything then. So I look forward to speaking to as many of you as possible. Um, I'll talk for about 15 minutes, um, and then there'll be, a few, a, a few, there'll be an opportunity after that to ask a few questions before we hear from some of the people who are actually making this happen in practice, you know, running or um, or setting up hits at the moment. Um, and I think actually, whilst I'll give you a good overview of the sort of things that the partnership is involved in and the scope and range of the different hits, actually, I think hearing from, from, from those people in particular is going to be you know, m much more useful to you in terms of getting a real feel for what it's like to be in a hit and you know, trying, to, trying, to, trying to take it forward. Um, so the, the, the partners who are, um, who are in the partnership um, are the, two, the University of the West of England and the University of Bristol. Uh, the City Council and then a whole range of NHS groups who are um, either provider organisations, so for example North Bristol Trust um, and University Hospitals Bristol, uh, or their commissioning groups like the Bristol, North Somerset, South Gloucester Clinical Commissioning Groups. Uh, there, is a, there is a slight difference in terms of the, the level of engagement in the partnership from these organisations. So for example, UE is a, is a full partner um, and as, as a result contributes um, financially as well to the partnership. Uh, the City Council at the moment supports the work, but they don't, they, don't, they don't make the same sort of financial contribution, for example, that your institution does. And I just wanted to you know, mark that specifically and to thank you know, Jenny and all colleagues for the continued, that continued specific support. That's incredibly important to the partnership. Um, and uh, the role of the partnership is set out here in the mission, which is, which is actually an incredibly sort of broad and ambitious um, proposition. You know, it's finding some way to uh, generate significant improvements in um, health gain at sort of city population level, but also to focus on specific improvements in the way in which services are delivered across the city and the, sort of, and, and, the, and the city region. And we've got these sort of four areas of focus, health services, research, innovation and education. Um, and the mechanism by which we bring this to life around sort of specific challenges is the HITS. Um, so the HITS are the thing which supports our aspiration to, to do something about this. Now there's a whole load of... Um, there's a whole lot of challenges associated with this at the moment, as you can see. This is a very broad and ambitious agenda. Um, and, you know, from my perspective, the sorts of things I'm, I'm, still, I'm, I'm working on, as well as trying to support the hits, I'm looking at the way in which, for example, the partnership is, is connected to broader discussions about the city and the city region in terms of what it's like as a place to live, the place of health in the city. Um, so as well as having a sort of specific focus on all the areas which I'll talk about in a minute, um, I'm also interested in you know, how genuinely the partnership can be a vehicle into doing, doing something which will make a real impact at the sort of level of a population. And of course, that's not months' work, that's potentially sort of decades of work. So we've set ourselves a very ambitious agenda. The partnership's been running for a couple of years now. Um, and although, as you can imagine, and as I'm sure as you expect me to say, there's still obviously plenty of work to do, you know, the hits are the mechanism by which we are beginning to do this work. Um, the personality of Andrew Young, who's also the chief executive of North Bristol Trust, is our chair. Um, and then there's a number of um, people in the sort of central team uh, who are supporting the partnership on a sort of daily basis. Um, a couple of those actually are here today. So Zoe, I, Zoe is, uh, looks after our comms, she's over there. And David Evans, of course, who I'm sure you all know, is uh, the lead for not just us on the PPI side, but also taking a coordinated approach across the Clark and also the Academic Health Science Network. So that's, that's the team that we have in the partnership who focus sort of day to day on supporting the, hit, the work of the HITS, um, and also on trying to facilitate this sort of wider engagement um, across the city, uh, all framed in terms of what does health mean in Bristol and the city region, um, and how can we do something which will make a real impact to the people who live here. Um, so in terms of how that whole approach has made a difference so far, well, we've got a whole lot of work which is up and running. 
Um, but this whole question of well, what impact has it really had is something which we're, we're now beginning to try and sort of understand in, in a more systematic um, and rigorous way. So we're, we, we're initiating some work now on to evaluate the work of the hits that we've um, set up to date, but also to think in more general terms about what value has come out of this deliberate attempt to facilitate collaboration and to work across organisations. And the answer at the moment is that we don't know yet, um, but that all of the sort of emotional um, energy around the partnership is, is, is incredibly positive. And particularly, for example, um, the way in which the HITs describe their work and the value that they've, the value that they've, they've derived from being able to you know, find a mechanism to build teams around the sort of problems that they're connected with. Um, whilst we still have yet to sort of really understand in a rigorous way the specific effect of a particular HIT, um, all the um, all the discussions I have tell me that as a mechanism to facilitate collaboration, it's been extremely useful. We now have to find out a way to demonstrate the, you know, the value in more rigorous terms. So um, in terms of how it's made a difference, well, my honest answer is that um, uh, we don't know is the short answer. But um, I feel that the, the answer is fundamentally a positive one. And we're trying to work um, on the evaluation side to put that into um, a slightly sort of rigor rigorous formulation. So here are the hits that we have. Um, these are all the ones that are um, in some way up and running. Some of these have been going for 18 months, two years. Other ones have only recently been um, authorised. And as you can see, there is a big, big range, both in terms of um, the different areas of focus for the hits, but also, <laughs> but also in terms of, if you like, the overall size of the issue. So some of these are quite focused um, in terms of a specific provision of a service. Uh, for you know, the integration of the pay management service, for example, across Bristol and Bath. Um, others are, are more general and, and, and are, are sort of addressing, if you like, these sort of so-called sort of grander challenges. So, for example, um, uh, the, the, the challenges posed by dementia and how we sort of collectively deal with that. But they all, um, they all have a sort of number of things in common, which I'll sort of talk about in a moment. Um, these are the ones which are, if you like, sort of currently in the pipeline. Um, and uh, these are the ones which the exec group of Bristol Health Partners, which is the body that authorises and, um, if you like, gives the sort of rubber stamp to the hits when they get formulated, is going to be looking at in the next uh, few months. And, um, and again, as you can see, a real interesting range from very sort of broad and probably sort of fairly obvious challenges associated with things like cancer. Um, but also, um, so the, 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 the BME f uh, hit at the bottom there is, 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 is focused on... Um, on the level of access to health provision from you know, a particular community. So actually, it's very much looking at you know, potential health inequalities and issues of access, which in sort of qualitative terms and in sort of category terms is actually you know, a really sort of very different proposition. So we've got a very broad range of activities. We've got a broad range of categories. Um, and the other thing which has really characterised this approach is that there's been no direction about how these should be developed. So the hits which I've told you about here are the, are the result of emergent um, teams, essentially. So they're, they're, they're propositions that people have brought to the partnership, um, building in most part on existing relationships or existing communities of interest. Um, and we've made no attempt really to sort of say we must have a whole lot of hits which are focused in this area or that area. We've just said, what are the issues that you as a community are trying to tackle? And can this mechanism, which will... Um, foster collaboration and help you to build teams around these issues be something which is of use? And at the moment, the answer is continually yes. We're, getting a, we're always getting new propositions. Um, and so as a mechanism, it also seems to be you know, very attractive to people. So what is it? Well, these are the, these are the sort of key components of the approach. Um, and the, sort of, the, re the really sort of fundamental ones, I guess, are um, the deliberate attempt to involve multiple organisations um, and to, to work, uh, work on issues in a, in, a, in a way which is really sort of focused on and committed to collaboration. Um, we're looking at quite a broad range of potential activities. So on the one hand, either interpreting or developing research um, in order to, do, to, to develop evidence about uh, what, what is effective and then changing practice on the <coughs> basis of that evidence and research. Um, and that link between the evidence and the practice is a fundamental component of the approach. Um, but actually, in, in, but in, in terms of where the different areas of, of different hits are focused, again, some of the hits are much more focused at the research end at the moment because they're operating in very new areas where there isn't an existing body of literature. Others um, have access to much more developed research and evidence, so they're much more about the practice, saying we know this is going to work, so we should try to implement it around here. 
Um, and then the dissemination of innovation and evidence. Well, th th those, are, those, are other, those are areas which um, are also the focus of, of the Clark and the HSN. So as a, as, a, as a partnership, we don't work in isolation and the HITs don't work in isolation either. Um, so there are a range of other organisations that uh, they can sort of work with and through to help achieve the sort of the fundamental components of this. Um, and then again, a number of key elements that all HITs are working on, PPI, uh, commissioner engagement, which is obviously fundamental in terms of um, driving some of the service changes that people are focused on, um, and a commitment to evaluation, which we're sort of developing an approach to in a slightly more rigorous way as a partnership now. Um, so this, for those of you who are interested in the potential process of becoming a HIT, is a diagram which is sort of attempts to describe that. So the, the st st we're starting on the top left, and as I said, at the moment this is an emergent process. So there isn't there isn't an attempt to, to sort of commission hits at present. There is an attempt to say we must develop a whole load of hits which are related to these areas. We are, we're sort of looking out into the community of people interested in health and the link between sort of service delivery and research and saying, what are the issues that you want to try and tackle? Have you got a team which is, to, which is building around a, a challenge or an issue? Um, and might the hit mechanism be useful to you in getting that work done? Now, I don't... Obviously, we're focused on the HITs as a mechanism of the partnership, but the HITs aren't the only mechanism out there. Um, so uh, in terms of um, our approach, if you like, and our pitch to you, it's very much this, this, is, this is a mechanism which we hope may be useful, but if it isn't, then you know, that's, that's, that, that's fine as well. If there is some other collaboration or some other body that can support your work and you think that's going to be more effective, that's perfectly legitimate. But potentially, the HIT, I think, is a, is, is a, is a really useful mechanism for a whole range of different propositions. Um, the, the first stage is always a discussion with myself and Lisa Wheatley, who looks after the hits on a sort of day-to-day -day basis to discuss the outline of the proposal. And it doesn't need to be sort of hugely developed. It just needs to be, well, you know, for a, num for, for a while I've thought that this is an issue that's a, a community developing around it. You know, what, what, what about looking at uh, setting up a hit? Uh, hello? That's all right, come in. Um, and then that leads, and the process by which this, uh, and the sort of time this takes varies from... You know, some, you know, six to eight weeks to six to eight months. It just depends on the proposition. But at some stage, um, we, we, we develop an expression of interest, which is then assessed at one of the monthly meetings of the, um, of the, of the Bristol Health Partners Exec Group. Um, and then uh, the, the, the group is either then admit, uh, are sort of given some advice about how the EOI could be developed and invited to resubmit it, or you proceed on to either an application via the um, Bristol Health Partners HIP mechanism, or potentially, if, if there's another more appropriate mechanism out there, advice about where else you might want to go. So the first stage really is just is, is about that initial discussion, um, and the people to sort of you know tap on the shoulder for that are myself and Lisa Wheat. You know, I'll share Lisa's deta contact details at the end of this talk. Um, and then the next stage um, is a sort of two-stage process in terms of the accreditation and the authorization of the HIT. So having developed the expression of interest, then, then, then there's an initial application, um, which is then submitted to the exec group, uh, presented to the exec group, and then formal feedback is received about where um, areas that might be developed in the full application. Um, and then again, a full application then goes to the exec group and is, um, is, 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 is either authorised or not. Um, and uh, sometimes it's sort of authorised with no other questions, off you go, or sometimes it's authorised with maybe some um, other ideas for where the, over the, for the next 12 months, next 12, 18 months, things might be developed. So there is, there is a process, a mechanism, but it all starts with a discussion with either myself or with Lisa Whitley. Um, and that discussion doesn't need to be, you don't need to have a, a massively fully formed proposition. Um, but if there is some issue that you think might, that you might, that if, if there's some issue which you are interested in, and there's a community of interest that, has, that is developing around, and you think that the hit is something which will help you do that work, then come and speak to us. Um, so these are, I, I think, are some of the, and this is what I hope that people who are, who are currently in the HITS would say about the, about the value of the mechanism. Um, there's been something, I think, very important about um, giving teams an identity and some sort of, if you like, in inverted commas, legitimacy in terms of the stamp from the partnership and you know, forming, a, forming an identity around a HIT focused on a particular proposition. Now, that's, that's, I think that's very interesting, and, and, and I, I kind of underestimated, I think, the sort of value of that, because whilst in many ways, when a group who's focused on an issue becomes a hit, they've still got the same objectives, they're still trying to do the same work, but somehow there's something different about the fact that they're now a hit in terms of the way people see them, and the, way, and the, and the doors that they can knock on, and the ease with which they can start to sort of navigate around this, 
ridiculously complex system that we're sort of trying to operate in. Um, and, um, and, and just the process of sort of forming that team. Hello, come in. Um, the process of forming that team and, and the discussions that go on around the expression of interest and that sort of early stage of the, uh, of the development of the application, that as well, I think, is a process that has been very, very valuable to, um, to a lot of different teams in terms of building relationships across organisations. And, and, and the HIP mechanism allows people, um, gives people a facility to do that in a way which somehow those organisations you know, legitimise. So, um, you know, without, I, I'm over-characterising it slightly, but um, so somehow or other, you know, some of these big organisations see somebody coming from a hit or a potential hit in a different way to someone as an individual with an idea trying to sort of, you know, build some work and some support. So um, that, I think, is something which has been actually sort of pretty powerful. Um, and then more specifically, then, you know, setting up a hit and having a, a, an identifiable and legitimised sort of team to, to, to focus work through then um, is then a route into some of these other um, benefits in terms of grant applications, um, the whole sort of pathways to impact question. Um, it's a sort of it's, a, it's an, 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 an evidence implementation, and then um, for those who are who are looking to clinical populations for research, it's also a mechanism to to describe your proposition in a way which is contained and which is badged and which people sort of um, understand and sort of connect you very easily. Um, and of course, where it's you know having formed this team, navigating this 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 complex system is also something that I, I think people have found easier once they have become a hit and have that identity than maybe they would if they were trying to operate as individuals or as sort of small groups of individuals. Um, and of course, it also, because the details of the hits are on our website and the, and the, and the objectives of the hits are all listed for people to see, it, it gives people an opportunity to connect to your work, another opportunity to find out what you're doing um, and, then to, um, and, and then to engage with it. Um, so there's, a, there's, there's some generic bits of support which the partnership provides to the, to the, to the HITS. Um, we're, looking, we're looking at this right now in terms of um, the model of support that we provide and the level of support that we provide. Um, but the, the generic components of it, I think, will, will, will always, for example, be an element of funding. Um, and, the, and the Bristol Health Partners isn't the... Um, it, it, we're only ever going to be able to provide, say, sort of tens of thousands of pounds worth of support to the HITS as, they, as they're at that sort of nascent stage. So helping them get to the point where they can begin to operate more independently and access, for example, bigger pools of resource from NIHR grants or from other sort of national funding bodies. Um, but, the, but the key role, I think, of the partnership is to get, those, get the teams to the point at which they can begin to operate more independently. So to help them with, for example, um, all these sort of generic components that are always going to be um, a feature of this work. Evaluation, the PPI advice, um, admin and, um, and, and, simp and, and skills such as pro pro project and program management. Um, and then uh, web presence on the BHP site. And then we're also um, facilitating some specific training. So next, uh, early this month, for example, where we've, 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 we've commissioned some training, which some of the HIT directors will be able to attend, focused on project management and sort of program management. So there is also, um, there is also some components, of, there is also some opportunity actually for personal development in terms of the sort of hit directors, the hit leads. Now, I'm personally very interested in how we can sort of, you know, we can, how, we, how we can formalise that um, and how we can sort of support that in a, in, a, in a more comprehensive way than we do at the moment. But in general terms, there is, there, there, there is generic support which the partnership will provide to the hits, but it's all framed in terms of helping the team to form giving the team access to the sort of generic skills that you might not have in things like PPI or in program and project management and getting them to the point where they can start to operate potentially more independently and work with those bigger funders and other organisations like national charities than the HR. Um, and then on a, uh, on a sort of routine basis, we, all, we also organise other events, networking lunches. We have an annual HIT conference which took place on the 2nd of June um, where um, all the HITs gave a sort of public update about the work they're doing. Um, each of the members of the exec group are paired with HITS, so there's, so there's a specific link into the exec group, and, obviously, and, th and they act as, if you like, a sort of champion for that HIT um, within the partnership, but also providing you know, additional mentoring support to, to, the, to the directors. Uh, we also have an innovation group, which has a similar link. Um, and then and this, and the, and, and, and the, and the type and level of support varies depending upon the sort of type of HIT, and also, if I'm being completely honest with you, the, the host organisation. Um, but there is also a degree of support which host organisations should provide to the HITS. Um, so, for example, the, the, the support that UE provides in terms of making 
um, supporting people's time to contribute to the hits, that's a very important and very sort of direct example of, of that sort of host support. Um, but other, other hits will be, f will be hosted, for example, by North Bristol or by university hospitals, which maybe have a more clinical focus. Um, and university hospitals might support them in terms of some financial planning, um, some sort of business case development, etc., etc. So the hits have a, a, a sponsor from within the partnership who is really the sort of main mechanism by which um, some of that additional capability is sort of developed. And then there's wider support from the partnership, but, um, but the key relationship, I think, is with the sort of host organisation. So as well as thinking about the general sort of proposition, if you're thinking about a hit, it would also be appropriate to think about among those partners um, who would be the most useful in terms of sort of direct support and sponsorship. Um, and then in terms of... Um, I guess what we sort of expect of the, of, 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 of the hits and the directors in particular, um, then uh, we, ask, we ask for sort of uh, progress reports on the basis of the agreed objectives that are in the application forms. Um, the, 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 the sort of whole model, which, you know, as I say, is, is we're still developing, is really about trying to get the, the hit teams to a point at which they're more self-sustaining and, for example, capability in terms of PPI um, and those other, an, an evaluation in particular, is built into you know, is built into the hits, but that, that typically will take some years to accomplish. And the role of the partnership is to sort of build that development, initially by providing most of it, but then subsequently by, you know, helping, helping to develop, so, you know, for example, a particular component in funding bids being associated with PPI in order that there's some sort of self-sustaining um, capability being built up. And then the key thing, which um, uh, we, we, I guess, in, you know, de facto end up demanding from well, the people, on, people, like people on the front row, here's their time. Um, and... I would, uh, and I'm sure they, they, they may say the same thing, but the level of commitment I think that's a, um, that is needed to, 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 pull together a, to pull together the team um, and to sort of take the hits forward is really, is really considerable. Um, and I think from just a sort of personal perspective for the hit leads and from the, for the directors, um, it, is, you know, it is potentially sort of quite demanding, both of their own sort of personal skills, but also just their sort of sheer availability of time. Um, that contribution, I can assure you, isn't underestimated by the partnership, but I would also say that um, if you're thinking about sort of stepping into the sort of hit model, then also don't, underest don't underestimate the demands on your own time in terms of pulling it all together and making it work. But that's not to discourage people, it's just to try and give a realistic, um, I guess, articulation of the, of, of, of the level of commitment and the potential demands when you start coordinating you know, lots of people in different organisations. Um, typically, a lot of the HITs have, um, have funded a coordinator to help with the sort of day-to-day -day, um, activities in terms of drawing people together. But there is always a very, very important role for the directors and for the HIT leads um, in terms of providing, if you like, a sort of figurehead you know, around which that work can grow and develop. Um, and for me, that's the, that, that, that cohort of people that we've got is absolutely fundamental to the partnership. They are the ones who really sort of make it work. Um, so I hope then I've given you a sort of a brief overview of the partnership, um, an overview of the sort of subject areas that we currently have hits focused on, some indication of the sort of mechanism by which you, um, you know, become a hit, if that's the way in which you decide to go, um, and some of the potential sort of benefits, but also some of, I think, from a personal perspective, some of the sort of demands that are associated with the model.